Hey there, I'm Jason Freed, and I'm going to give you a walkthrough of Hey. Let's get into it. So here, this is Hey. You're looking at the inbox, and by the way, that's not a typo. Everybody hates their inbox, so we have an inbox, and the M stands for important. I'll get to that in just a minute. Um, now, this different naming actually goes deeper than just important. Um, this is not your typical inbox. So even though ours is called M, I want you to think of this as your in, either if you're in Gmail or Outlook or Yahoo or whatever. It's that kind of thing. This is where most emails are going to come in. But what's different about Hey is that Hey takes a different approach to who can email you. So one of the problems with email is that everybody can email you, which is also one of the great things about email. The problem is, is if you've had an email address for many, many years, it's everywhere. You can't control it anymore. It's been bought and sold and traded and handed out. And you just have to deal with people sending you emails that you don't want. You know, people you don't want to hear from, emails you don't want to get. And I'm not talking about spam. We have a spam filter. It's a great spam filter. But there's people that get through that because they're not spam. Could be a salesperson. Could be a friend of a friend who got your email. Maybe you bought a product at one company and they sold your email address or sold the list or someone else bought a list and now you're on some other list and you're getting four or five other companies getting in touch with you. It's not technically spam, but it's stuff you'd normally have to deal with. Well, with Hey, you don't. And let me tell you why. The first time anybody emails you with Hey or from, I should say, to Hey, they don't need to be using Hey. As long as you're using Hey, it works. Um, they don't land in your inbox. They land in what's called the screener. It's kind of like screening your calls. If someone calls you and you don't recognize the number, you probably don't pick it up. Maybe you check the voicemail later. If you don't like what you hear, you don't call them back. That's how this works. So the first time someone emails you, they don't land here, they land here. Now I'm going to click this button. In this case, there's five people or five services that have emailed me for the very first time and I have not made a decision about them yet. Do I want to hear from them? Yes? No? It's up to me. It's not up to them. They can try to email me, but it's up to me if I actually receive their emails. So um, let's take a look at these. Here's a timeshare investment opportunity that's got past spam for a number of different reasons. It's not technically spam. I don't want to hear from them though, so I'm just going to hit no. Now when I hit no, I've essentially blocked them. They can never email me. I could be on some drip campaign that sends me eight emails over the next 10 days. I'll never get any of them. I'll never hear from them again. Now, I can change my mind if I want. I can always go and flip them back on, but they're out of my life right now. I never have to deal with them. I don't have any of their obligations. I don't have to deal with their emails, nothing like that. However, in this case, there are a couple people I do want to receive emails from. <coughs> Here's my uh, kid's teacher, Jeff Wolf. I'll say yes. And my friend Robin, you know me for the first time using hey, great. I'm going to leave these here for now. Um, but what I just did was I said no to one person and said yes to two. The two I said yes to land in my inbox by default, okay? Now, this is where things get even more different. So most inboxes, like Gmail, Outlook, you name it, they mix together, they blend together your reds and your unreds. So you might have three unreds, and then five reds, and then another unread, and then two more reds, and then four more unreds, and you have this like just striping of different kinds of emails, and it's kind of a mess. It's a total mess. And you never really know, like, what haven't I seen yet? Like, why is that so hard? Um, it shouldn't be, and it's not in Hay. So Hay's inbox is divided into two sections. New for you at the top. This groups together all of your unread emails, all in one place, always. So right now I have six. I only have six. There's not one hiding somewhere else, okay? And then down below that, I have what's called previously seen. Previously seen is a list of every email I've ever seen, sent, read, anything like that. It's down here below, and I can just scroll down to get it. And so the stuff I did today is going to show up in Previously Seen, which is really handy because if you think about like in Gmail, for example, if you want to see the email that you sent today or received today or dealt with today, like where do you go see that? Well, I guess you could go to All Mail, but that's like another place to go because maybe some of it's in your inbox, some of it might be in your sent mail, some of it might be um, archived. Uh, it's, it's like... It's just kind of all over the place. With Hey, it's either new or it's previously seen. One screen, no other places to go. Now, I've got six unreads. Now, here's the thing. An email comes in, and sometimes you know you just need to reply to somebody, and you just do that. Pretty easy. But oftentimes, you know you need to get back to somebody, but you don't have time right now. So what do you do? Well, most people, if you use 
Gmail, Outlook, anything. Um, they mark the email unread again, so they don't lose track of it, or they star it or flag it, or they maybe make a folder or a label or something. It's one workaround after another. It's one hack after another, right? Hey is not about workarounds. It's about workflows. So we built in a really lovely workflow for replying later. Let me show you how it works. Let's say um, I've got a friend here, Annie, who just emailed me. And I know I want to get back to Annie, but I don't have time right now. Okay. If I had time, I'd just hit reply now. No big deal. But I'm going to hit reply later instead. We have a distinct button here at the bottom called reply later. I'm just going to click that. Now, when I do that, what ends up happening is Annie's email is added to a stack of emails at the bottom of my screen right here. This is called my reply later stack. Now, over here, we have another one for set aside, which I'll show you in a minute, but I'm going to focus on reply later first. If I click this, it fans open. And this is a collection of everyone I've said I need to get back to. This is my own simple queue. These are people I know I need to get back to. Now, I can click on an email to go to it, right? Okay, and reply. But the real magic is when you open the stack, right below it, there's a button called focus and reply. So when I hit focus and reply, here's what happens. I go into focus and reply. It's a separate screen. It opens up every single email in that stack, stacks them up all on one screen, right? And puts a little reply box next to each one. So I can just reply from here. And I'm just gonna fake these just so you get a sense, but like here's, you know, here's my reply, send. Now when I send a reply, I get a little receipt at the top and the next one in my stack comes up. Here's another reply. Of course, like these wouldn't be how I'd be replying, but you get the point. I can cherry pick too. I can just go down here and go, you know what, I wanna get back to, uh, to Mike. Sounds good. Thanks, whatever it would be, right? There's the receipt. Now, what's wonderful about this is that if you think about how you normally reply to emails in most email apps, you go to find an email that you need to reply to, now or later, you click it, you open it, you reply, you go back to your inbox. What's in your inbox? All the other crap you don't wanna deal with. Maybe even new stuff that's come in since you opened that other email. That sucks, but that's the way email works. It's not the way hey works. When you put things in your reply later stack and you go into focus and reply, nothing else can distract you because this is the queue that you made. Nothing else is coming into this queue because you're the one who built it. No one else is building it for you. And you can sit here and reply to the emails you need to get back to people on without being distracted by anything else. For me, typically around four o'clock in the afternoon, I'll go to my reply later stack, go into focus and reply, and knock out my replies. I'll spend a half hour doing email, once a day basically. The other times during the day I'll queue things up, but I'll actually do the email at the end of the day. It's wonderful, it's a game changer, it's, it's huge. So that's focus and reply, and that's reply later. Now, we also have another stack here called set aside, because sometimes there's emails that you don't need to reply to, but you need to reference later. Maybe you have a phone call later, maybe you have dinner reservations tonight, you know, Maybe you have an itinerary for a trip coming up, something like that. So you can open that stack and it's gonna fan up again. You can see what's in there. And I can put something in there. By the way, I don't have to go actually into the emails. If I know that this grammar practice guide needs to go in there, I can just click it, basically click the avatar on the front and go up to set aside, boom. And now it's down here in this stack, there it is. And I can open any one of these emails. I can also say, view the set aside board. When I do that, it kind of opens up little mini previews of each one so I can see them. And if I don't want something in there anymore, I can click it and just click done. It takes it right out back to the inbox. So what we're doing here is we're using space. Okay. We're using a peripheral vision as well. These things are important to me, but I don't need them in my face, right? I don't want them mixed in with everything else. I just want them separate. I know where they are. They're in a predictable location. They're not being pushed down by anything else. They're not being pushed away, which is different than most things. If you mark something unread or you flag it or you start, it's like just still mixed in with everything else and it gets pushed away. I'm putting these in distinct stacks like you might with real mail. You get your mail, you put it on a table, you make a couple piles or a couple stacks, like you know where things are, maybe the same way you work with things on your desk. Here's my pile of things I gotta deal with. Here's my other pile of things I have to deal with. Here's some stuff I have to deal with later. Here's some stuff I have to deal with now. You use space.
to make sense of things. And we're doing that here in Hay. Now, let me show you some other cool things about the inbox and what makes Hay special. So I've got four unread emails left here in my new for you, okay? What do you do normally with email? You click one, you open it, you look at it, and then you go to the next one and you open it and you look at it and you go to the next one, you open it and you look at it. This has been the same way to read unread emails or emails at all for 50 years since email was invented. We have a different approach. You can do that, by the way, of course. You can click on it and open it and go back. But we have a button over here called Read Together. So I've got four unreads. I'm going to just click Read Together. When I do that, it opens up all the emails and just stacks them up right there. So I can just read them like you would a news feed, like we're used to reading pretty much anything else today in 2020, right? Um, you just scroll through these things. And by the way, if you see something in here that you want to triage, like, oh, I want to get back to Jeff, I just click this and go reply later. Boom. Takes it out of that list, puts it in the reply later stack. When I'm done, mark all is seen. Got a nice empty space here up at the top. Really, really nice and clean. It's not inbox zero. We're not into the whole inbox zero thing because I've got all the other emails down here because this is convenient. But at least I'm cleared out of my new emails and I can feel like I've got all that stuff handled. I'm on top of it. Now, the inbox is where emails from important people or services go. These are things that you want to see when they come in. But there's a whole bunch of other kinds of emails that you get that are not things that you need to see immediately when they come in. Things like newsletters, for example, or marketing emails. Again, ones I've said yes to because no one gets through to me unless I say yes to them here, right? But I don't want them landing in my inbox because they're not instantly important to me. They're not immediately important to me. In fact, if I get a newsletter and I read it three days from now, that's fine. I shouldn't have to deal with it next to an email from my doctor or my wife or, or anyone else that really matters to me, right? So if you go up to the, we have, let me kind of step back for a second. We have one menu in Hay. It's called the Hay menu. Um, and if you click the Hay menu, you get to see some other options here. This is basically how you get around the whole product. And I'll walk through this some more as we go. We've been in the inbox so far. And by the way, you'll see there's some little keyboard shortcuts. Whenever there's a keyboard shortcut, it's right in the top right corner of the button. Um, so like, again, if I select this here, you'll see them up here and you'll see them over here as well, right? Lots of keyboard shortcuts. You'll learn them as you go. All right, let's go to the feed. The feed is where all my newsletters, marketing emails, casual long reads, that kind of stuff go. So let's take a look at that. Here's the feed. Again, things are open for me. So I can just simply scroll down. I don't need to think about opening something and looking at it and closing it and opening something and looking at it and closing it. And I don't need to look at things in rows. Why, is, why, is, why are all emails just simply in rows? Like, just open them up. Again, we're used to reading things this way these days. Now I can just kind of look through these and if I see something I like, you know, I can just click on it. So like, let's say this wire cutter one, I just hit see more. It just expands in place. I can keep reading it and just keep scrolling down. Now, in the feed, there's no notion of read or unread or new or old. Things just come in by date. The most recent one's at the top, okay? Again, these are newsletters. Let's be honest, like if you miss one, it doesn't really matter. It's, these are not big deals. So it's more for casual reading. Stuff comes in here. I check this a couple times a week and just scroll through and if something catches my eye, I read it and great. Otherwise, no big deal. It just takes a lot of load off, takes a lot of pressure off. Now there's another, and I'll, by the way, I'm going to show you in a little bit how you decide where these emails go because Hey does not decide for you. You tell Hey where things go and then Hey follows you. But this is not about artificial intelligence or algorithms or fancy tech companies deciding what you should see and what you shouldn't see and what's important to you and what isn't important to you. You tell Hey what's important to you. You tell Hey what you want Hey to do and Hey will do that for you. All right, so there's another category of emails that you get, which is like uh, receipts, transactions, order confirmations, that kind of stuff, right? That's what the paper trail is for. So we're going to go into the paper trail. This is where your receipts go, Spotify receipts. Here's something from, uh, from my doctor, like my doctor's chart system, um, a subscription, receipt from Netflix, that kind of stuff, right? So this is where all those emails go that you don't really ever need to see but you want to have handy if 
one comes in and you need to re reference it later. So they go in the paper trail. They stay out of your face, totally out of your face. They're never in your inbox and they go in the paper trail. Now, how do you decide or how do you tell, hey, where to put things? There's a few different ways. If we go back to the screener, clicking yes on somebody automatically puts them in the inbox. That's your default. But there's a little arrow here at the top of the yes button. And if you click that, you can screen people directly into a different place. So you can screen them into the inbox or to the feed or to the paper trail. If you screen someone into the feed, all their emails will always go to the feed. If you screen them to the inbox, they'll always go to the inbox, etc. Now you can do that here or you can do it later. So I'm just going to show you something here. Um, I'm going to go back up to the Hey menu and I'm going to type someone's name, Jasmine. Jasmine's a friend of mine. I'm going to go to her page. So in Hey, every contact gets a page. And this page is visible to me only, so it's not visible to anybody else. It's not visible to her, it's just for me. And I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up to the top and show you what I was going to show you in the first place. But let's start down here for some context. So every email I've ever sent Jasmine, she's ever sent me, or any thread that we're both on together appears here on her page. Okay? So I don't need to go searching for things if I know Jasmine was involved. I just go to Jasmine's page and find it. Above this are any recent files that Jasmine sent me. So again, like, hey, is really about surfacing. It's not about digging. Email traditionally is about digging. I got to dig through this thread to find that thing. I got to dig through this thread to find that attachment. With hey, all the attachments that Jasmine sent you recently are right here. So if I know Jasmine sent me something yesterday and I don't want to think about the thread, I just come here and find it. But at the top here, we got a few additional options. And um, this is the one I was going to show you. So how do you decide where people's emails go? Well, you click the delivering to button and you decide here. So I want Jasmine's emails going to the inbox, which is where I'm going to keep them. But let me jump to someone else. Let's go to Huckberry. Huckberry is a retailer newsletter. I want theirs to go to the feed. Now I could change my mind and say I want their emails to go to the inbox, but I want their emails to go to the feed, so I just select it here. And then any email from yo at huckberry.com will land in the feed from that point on. So I've told Hey what I want, and Hey's going to do the same thing for me. So if I go to Spotify here, Spotify sends me receipts, I want theirs to go to the paper trail. And by the way, if I change my mind about a contact that I screened in, I'm like, you know what, I don't, I don't want them here anymore. I just hit screened out here and they're gone forever. So all their emails that I've seen, that I have in my, my inbox or anywhere else, they're all pulled out and I won't get emails from them again. And again, I can change my mind. By the way, to do that, if you go up to your avatar up here, you go to your screener history, you can see a list of everyone you've screened in, everyone you've screened out, and you can just change your mind. Like, you know what, I'll change my mind on them. Boom. You know what, no, they're bugging me out. So it's that simple to, uh, to change your mind. Again, screened in on the left, screened out on the right. Okay. Now, let me show you some of the other things that suck about email that we fixed. <laughs> so one of the things that really sucks about email is this. So Russell sent me an email, recipes for mama's pumpkin bread. I really appreciate that. Good recipe. Thank you. But of course, he didn't give the email a title or a subject. Um, and this happens all the time. Like my dad does this. My dad sends me links all the time with no subject. Or it's like the link is like news or something like that. Or the link will be the subject. You know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you do. So you're kind of stuck with that. Email, like you're kind of stuck with what other people do. That's one of the reasons people hate emails because you're stuck with other people's problems and other people's bad email hygiene or other people's poor organizational habits. With hey, we've got that fixed. So check this out. With any email, I can just click on the subject and rename it to whatever I want. So I'll say like pumpkin bread recipe. Now I just renamed that email for me and for me only. I didn't mess up anything on Russell's side. On Russell's side, it's still called whatever he called it. But for me, it's called pumpkin bread recipe so I can find it later, right? So if I scroll back down here, there it is, pumpkin bread recipe. And if he replies to it, I'll mark it on scene just to give you a sense. If he replies to it and it comes back into my new for you, it's called pumpkin bread recipe, even though on his side it's called no subject or whatever it was called. So that's a really, really nice thing uh, about Hey. Now, another thing that's really great about Hey is that you can merge things together that are separate threads but about the same thing. So for example, let's take this example here, auto body repair. 
By the way, for this demo, I'm Julie. That's why it says Julie, and that's Julie's face, but just I'm Julie for this demo. Got in a car accident. I sent my friend who's also my insurance agent, insurance agent um, some information. She sent me a link. I sent her a picture back. Great. I then got in touch with Caliber Collision. Caliber Collision then sent me a quote, right? So here was the um, thread with Jasmine about the car accident. And then here is the auto body repair estimate. So I'll click on that. Here's the auto body repair estimate, right? In my head, in my world, these are the same things. This auto body repair thread and this auto body repair estimate, they're the same things, but they're separate email threads because that's just how email works. Like the company sent me an email so they're going to send me a different thread through their own system than the discussion I was having with Jasmine. But I want to keep these together. Now, the way you typically would do this in most email apps is maybe, maybe you make a label or something. I don't know. Maybe you do that. But they're still not together. They're maybe in the same place, but they're not together. With Hey, you can select any two or three or five emails and merge them together. So auto body repair, auto body repair estimate. In my mind, same thing. I select them and I select this merge option. You'll see there's a new merge option up here. Just select that. Now I get to rename this. So I'll be like estimate. I'll be like estimate for car crash because that's really kind of what I want to call it. I'll even like for VW car crash, whatever, right? Merge permanently. I say OK. Boom. One thread, estimate for VW car crash. Here's the first email, here's the second email, here's the third email, here is the estimate. All in one thread now. Now, I didn't mess up anything on the other side. So, Jasmine still has her separate thread, Caliber Collision Austin, Texas still has their separate thread. If anyone replies to any of those threads, it still comes into one thread for me. Hey helps you make sense of the world, right? I don't care if their world is messy, I don't care if their world is separate, I don't care if they don't care. I care. So I put this stuff together in one place now. Now I have a single thread for this thing. It's really, really wonderful. Um, I use this all the time in my life because I get people who email me for a while on one thread. Then the next day they send me another thread. It's about the same thing. They just were, let's call it too lazy to find the original thread. So they sent me a new one. Now I've got the same conversation spread, spread across multiple threads, fragmented. I don't want that. So I just merge them together and, and clean it up. All right. Let me show you some other stuff. Now, one of the things that's really unique about Hey is that by default, all notifications are off on Hey, push notifications. So when someone emails you in Hey, you're not going to get a push on your phone, a push on your desktop, a push to your watch. Hey is quiet by default. It's loud at your discretion. And that's key because when everything's off by default, you get some leverage. So um, let me show you how this works. When you go to a person's page, I'm going to go back to Jasmine's page. At the top here, everyone by default is not notifying. But if Jasmine's really important to me, or maybe Jasmine's a good friend of mine, or Jasmine's my insurance agent, normally I don't really need to get notifications from her, but right now I'm dealing with this car crash thing, so I really want to hear if she writes me back. I just go here and say, notify me. And now, whenever Jasmine emails me, I'll get a push notification to my phone or my desktop or my watch or however I have it set up. What's cool about this is that now whenever I get a notification from Hey, I know it's someone important that I said I want to hear from because everyone's off by default unless I say they're on. Now sometimes it's not just about a person, right? It's about a thing. So let's say I had a condo in South Padre Island and let's say there's a roof leak and we've got a homeowner association talking and we've got some tenants talking and I happen to have a place in this building. So this is a really important topic for me right now. This, this thread is important. I want to know when it's updated. I want to know when there's, no, when there's new news. So I can go down to the bottom here, go to more, and say send me push notifications. Now whenever this thread is updated by anybody, including if someone new is added to the thread, I'll get a push notification on my phone or my desktop or my laptop or wherever I have it set up. This is such a big deal because I don't need to be told when to check my email. Nobody needs to be told when to check their email. What we want to know is if somebody specific emails us or if something important gets updated. And that's what Hey lets you do by turning off all notifications by default. All right. Let me show you something else that's really cool. 
I kind of alluded to this earlier. When I went to a person's page, there was that strip of files. Um, we have something better than that. So one of the really crappy things about email is, um, is finding attachments. File attachments are a real hassle. Um, you usually have to go dig through a thread to find the file, and maybe the file is in the fifth email of a thread that has 12 emails, and you have to expand them all, and you get, which one was it in? Not with Hey. With Hey, we have a section called All Files. When you go to All Files, this is a library of every single file attachment you've received from anybody ever in one place. I don't have to go dig through threads. I just come here. This is the most recent one, so if something happened today, I just come here, and I can also specify what I'm looking for. Like, you know what? I, someone sent me a PDF. Show me the PDFs. There we go. You know what? I think it was Russell. Russell sent me a PDF. Oops. Boom. There it is. I didn't have to dig for files, or I'm sorry, I didn't have to dig through threads. Didn't have to think about what thread it was. I didn't even have to know who it was, but in this case I did, but I could just go PDFs by everybody. Um, and, and by the way, if you, if you do click on it, it downloads it directly. But if you click on the name of the thread down here, it's going to drop you in line in the thread so you have some context. If you really want to get back to the thread, you can do it that way. This is like amazing that this isn't really something that's common. It's such a game changer. It saves so much time. Hey is really about surfacing things. And email typically is about digging for things. So Hey is very, very different there. Speaking of that, um, there's another thing that's really particularly cool. Um, so let me, let me take you to a different thread here and show you something kind of neat. Um, so sometimes there's something in an email that really matters to you that you want to remember but the only tools email typically gives us is like either in hey you can set something aside or in other apps you can maybe star something or flag something but it's not the email that I want to remember it's something in the email so let's say um, there's a line in this email here um, I just signed up Jack for the Junior Golf Academy at Barton Creek Golf Club. I was wondering if you were interested in having Cooper sign up. Well, maybe. So, like, I want to think, I want to remember that, okay? In Hey, I can select the text. Oops. Let me do that over. Sorry. My finger got stuck there. I'm going to select the text and say Save Clip, okay? Clip saved. Now, where does that go? What does that mean? If I go up to my face up here, and I go to Clips. What I'm going to see is my Clips library. This is a collection of every clip I've made across any email that I have. And this is the one I just did. I signed up Jack up for the Junior Golf Academy, etc. So what's cool about this is I don't have to go digging for things when I need them. For example, here's an example. Um, Time Warner Cable, Easy Connect Kit. When you receive the kit, please reference this account number course, whoever remembers their account number and calls at this number, right? So I could have had that in a thread and the kit comes in in the mail and I get it and I go, oh, I need to call Time Warner now and I need to reference this account number and what number do I need to call right there? Like I could say, I got to go find that thread in my email. I don't remember what it was called. I could search for it maybe. I, maybe I got a bunch of stuff from Time Warner. I, I just, when I saw that initial email, I just clipped that piece. So now I have it on hand. And of course, this works on my iPhone, Android, any platform that we have. We have apps for all the platforms. I can quickly get to this. And when I'm done with it, for example, let's say I don't need this anymore. I just hit delete. I don't need this anymore. I just hit delete and it's gone. But this is a way to kind of have a perpetual clipboard of all the little things inside emails that uh, are really, really handy to have. It's a great feature. Okay, a couple other quick things I'm going to show you. Um, let's go to this one. So here's a long email with a bunch of people on it, right? This is a big email thread. Um, you know, for a while, this email thread was really handy for me, but then it kind of got off the rails as email threads tend to do, and like at some point I couldn't get off it. There's no way to get off big email threads, right? You ask someone to get off, maybe someone takes you off, but the other person replies all and you're right back on it, and you don't want to reply all to everyone saying take me off because now you just told 50 people to take you off and then you're that guy. So um, with hey, I can just go to any thread and go to more and say, ignore this thread. And when I say ignore this thread, it says you ignored the thread. Any future updates won't be shown in new for you. Meaning, if I go back to my inbox, even if that thread is updated, it gets new emails, it'll never show up here. So it's still updating. I still have a complete record of it, but it's never, ever going to bug me, which is, which is great. Um, okay, let me show you something else that's really special about hey. 
Uh, and this is something a lot of people don't really know about. So here's wire cutter. Um, and you'll see on the wire cutter email, there's a little badge here. It's a little binocular badge. And by the way, you might see, have seen this on this email too. A little binocular badge, right? Um, let's go back to this. This means that this email has what's called a spy tracking pixel embedded in it. So whatever mailing software wire cutter is using, they're embedding a pixel that tells them if I open their email, if I read their email, what my IP address is, which technically means they could have a bit of physical location data on me, what brand of phone I might have or what brand of computer I might have and how many times I open the email and how long I spent reading the email. This is none of their business and I have no way to opt out of this information. I can unsubscribe from the list, but People don't even realize that simply opening an email reveals all this sorts of all this personal information about people. And in fact, Wirecutter might be something I subscribe to, so maybe I trust them, but there's services out there that any random person can send you an email. You simply open it. You have no knowledge that you're being tracked, yet you've just sent all this personal information back to the original sender. Frankly, we think this should be illegal, but until then, we're blocking it. So here's what happens. If we detect a thread with a spy tracker pixel in it, we show you this thing at the top. It says you're protected. We blocked a spy tracker in this thread. And if you click it, it tells you everything. It says Wirecutter used an app called MailChimp to send this email. MailChimp can track if you opened it and when you opened it and where you're located and how you opened it. Some or all of this data could have been reported back to Wirecutter. We consider this an invasion of your privacy. And that's why Hey blocks MailChimp and other tools like it from gathering and reporting this information. And I don't mean to pick on MailChimp. There's 40 to 50 services right now that are doing this and more and more are coming all the time. We're blocking 98% of them and we'll continue to block more. This way you can open your emails and read your emails in complete privacy without leaking any personal information back to the original sender. Now, historically, the only way to do this would have been to view emails without images on because it's the image that the server on the other side knows has been pulled and that's how they get the information from you. But reading emails with images turned off is just it's crappy, right? So what we do is we proxy the images. So we've downloaded the email or the, the images. So the other side will get our IP address, but not yours. It's kind of like a VPN basically. So you can still look at your emails full of images and not have to worry about ever leaking your privacy to anybody. Really big deal. By the way, um, I've been using my mouse to get around and I, I sort of mentioned these keyboard shortcuts. Um, we do have them on the buttons, but also there's a little keyboard button down here. And if you click that, it brings up all the different shortcuts. And depending on where you are, this menu is going to be a little bit different. So if I'm looking at an email like this and I click this, this gives me some information about threads. Or where if I'm in the inbox and I click this, this gives me information about the inbox. All right. Um, let me see. A couple other little details. Um, as many people want to do, um, you can forward email into Hey. So let's say you have a Gmail account and you want to try Hey and you want to get your Gmail into Hey. Um, you can go up to here and go to forwarding setup and get instructions on how to forward your email from Gmail or Outlook or iCloud or Yahoo Mail or Comcast, whatever you use. And we have all the instructions here. Then you just enter your, the address you're forwarding from here so we know where it's coming from. And that's a nice clean way to start to get email in here without having to give up um, your old email address. Because when you sign up for Hey, you get a new email address and at hey.com, but you can forward your old email in as well. All right. Um, one last thing I want to show you, and then um, there's actually, you know, I'll show you two more things, which are kind of related. So what often happens in emails is that an email begins in email, like a conversation begins in email, and then maybe it goes to the phone. Maybe it goes to an in-person meeting. And that information is relevant to the original email, but where do you keep your notes or where do you keep the continuation of the conversation? Well, most people either don't or they keep a separate notes app or they have some of that data or they paste it somewhere else. Like, it's weird that you can't add stuff to your own emails. In Hey, you can. So here's a thread. This is an email that Marianne sent to me. And you'll see right down below this is this like little purple block here. This is what's called a note to self in Hey. I can annotate my threads with my own personal notes that of course the other person can't see, but I can take notes down from a call, take thoughts down before I respond to an email, 
even drag files in here so I have them handy if I need them later. And the way to do that is to simply go, here's some pictures and stuff, and to go down here and go to more, and you say add note to self. And I would just add the note to self here, and it says this is a private note just for you. It will not be sent to anyone else on the thread. And if I was to write that up, it would look like here and show up right in the thread. So it's a great way to be able to annotate things and to add a little bit of personal flavor to threads, especially if you have conversations that go outside of email. And likewise, there's one other thing I want to show you. Um, there's a bunch more to Hey, but this has gone on plenty for you, I'm sure, um, is this feature right here. These are called stickies. So people are in their inbox all the time, and it's nice to be able to jot something down and annotate your own inbox to remind you or jog your memory of something. So in any email, I can um, just say boom, and I can say sticky, and I can say like, um, uh, you know, don't forget to send her the picture, whatever, right? Um, it could be anything. It could be a long paragraph, it can be multiple paragraphs. I just say save sticky and this sticky note now sticks to this email no matter where it goes. So again, if someone's respond and it's unread again, here it is up here. If I read it, mark is seen, it's down here, right? Sticky note sticks to the email so I get to annotate my inbox. Why can everyone else throw stuff in my inbox but I can't? With hey, of course you can and when you're done, you can edit it of course. I can just hit delete and it's gone. Just like you might throw a sticky on a screen or a piece of paper on your desk or whatever, same thing now you can do in your emails. So there's, of course, even more to Hey. We've got a great search. We've got labels. I didn't show you that because it's pretty basic. Here's all the emails labeled dog stuff. And by the way, this is actually quite cool. We pull out all the attachments as well. So again, helping you surface things instead of dig for things. But um, this is Hey in a nutshell. Um, it's quite a bit different. It's not just an email software, it's actually an email philosophy, built-in workflows, not workarounds, um, and we really think you're going to like it. We put a couple of years into this, it's a lot of work for us, we're really proud of it, and we really, really hope you give it a try and love it.